What up, everybody, and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz, and I talk about blades, and we've got a new knife review today. I'm very excited about this review. Uh, this is a brand that I once had a heated love affair with, and it sort of cooled off. You know, people change, and they, they move apart, and and sometimes... The perfect one turns out to not be perfect. And then maybe later on, the perfect one that turned out to not be perfect comes back and is maybe a little bit better than you gave them credit for. And that is the case here. What we've got is a product from Best Tech Knives. Now, a couple of years ago, I was a huge Best Tech fanboy. And I'm not talking about their high-end knives. I'm talking about their G10, D2, quote-unquote, budget knives like this Best Tech Penguin. This is the Best Tech Penguin. It is model BG32B. The B obviously stands for Bazon Blades. And Best Tech probably did that on purpose just to get my attention. And for those of you that thought that it stood for blue, get out of here with that crap. Obviously stands for Baz on Blades. This is the Best Tech Penguin, part of Best Tech's quote-unquote budget line. Again, the G10 D2 liner lock um, flipper folders that really broke Best Tech on the market and made them so popular. So um, let's uh, let's uh, throw out the price on this bad boy. It is it, it, just about everywhere. It's at the typical $52 price point. I grabbed this one from Justin at White Mountain Knives. I used a discount code. I don't remember whose discount code because there's you know, a bunch of them floating around out there. And I got this one for, what, $46.80. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, and this is an, an excellent, excellent knife. Nearly perfect in realization. And I'm very happy uh, to say that. Uh, once again, uh, Bazon Blades and Best Tech are having a heated love affair. And guys, when I say heated, I mean um, it's on fire. So let's bring in some packaging first. It's a Best Tech box here. You can see it's got Best Tech all over it. What do we have right here? Turn that right side up. We've got the Penguin D2 Stonewash Satin. It is a dual finished blade. It is the BG32B for Bazon Blades or blue if you think so. Um, and uh, let's knock out some specs. We're going to uh, get into this knife uh, very quickly. Um, go through the specs and talk about a little bit. We're going to do a, a partial disassembly. I want to show you something in this knife that I, I really like the way that Best Tech did as far as manufacturing. Um, let's knock out the numbers first. Your blade length, three and five eighths of an inch or nine centimeters. Uh, blade stock thickness is 137 thousandths of an inch or three and a half millimeters. Uh, your blade width at the widest, 1.08 inches or 27.6 millimeters. Handle length, four and three quarters of an inch or 12 centimeters. Your handle thickness, slightly above the average half inch at 580 thousandths of an inch or 14.8 millimeters. Handle width at the widest, um, 1.2 inches or 30 millimeters. Your closed width at the widest, of course, is up here with the flipper tab. And that is a one and a half inches or 38 millimeters uh, overall length, uh, eight and three eighths of an inch or 21 centimeters. Your stop pin diameter, 118 thousandths of an inch or three millimeters. 
behind the edge thickness on this very high um, pretty much full flat grind in fact it is a full flat grind um, is 14 thousandths of an inch or 0.37 millimeters very thin behind the edge very slicey uh, handle to blade ratio is 0.76 very good and your weight is a solid but not really hefty feeling 4.9 ounces or 139 grams now material wise again we are d2 tool steel in the blade d2 tool steel is a um, an older, very simple, semi-stainless tool steel with a carbon content of 1.5%, a chromium content of 11.5% to 12%, and that misses the uh, stainless qualifier by about a percentage and a half. Uh, it does have vanadium in it, and... Um, it typically it rock wells in the 59 to 62 range. Uh, what you get out of D2 as far as edge retention, it has good edge retention. Um, the way I like to describe D2 is the initial razor edge is it lasts a decent amount of time. And once it fades, what you get from D2 is a very toothy, aggressive cutting edge that will last a long time and that is because that edge is packed full of big old carbides uh, from all that carbon and that chromium uh, forming some big old carbides um, for impact resistance now in a folding knife like this where you're not going to be chopping i'm going to say impact resistance toughness is good uh, I don't like D2 and a big blade or you're going to be uh, chopping with it or anything like that. Um, it can be a little chippy on the edge if it is hardened too hard or it's run hot when the edge is sharpened. Um, I've not had any issues out of this knife. been carrying it about three weeks. No issues at all. It is held on to that initial edge very well. Corrosion resistance, um, you can listen to the naysayers and D2 haters that swear up and down that it might as well come out of the box with rust on it, uh, or you could listen to Bazon Blades and uh, with a modicum of care, very little care, no issues with D2. Unless you are in a, uh, let's say, a very humid area or a very humid area with salt in the air. So if you're on the coast uh, near the ocean, I don't care for D2 there. But as far as, uh, uh, you know, normal living conditions, um, if you just wipe off D2 after use, you don't leave it wet. Uh, you don't leave any, uh, you know, if you're cutting food, don't leave food on it. Um, if you want to use a um, rust inhibitor, I use Tough Glide on mine. I've never had D2 rust ever. Never. Not the first time because I wipe the blade off and then every once in a while I wipe it down with some Tough Glide. And uh, you can use mineral oil or whatever. Uh, and that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Now, in the handle... It's pretty typical of the G10 D2 series. Of course, we've got G10 scales over stainless liners. It is a liner lock, uh, stainless small parts, the B-branded Best Tech pivot, uh, which is a captured pivot, uh, T6 screws for your uh, scale screws, and the pocket clip. Uh, the pocket clip is um, bent stainless. It is deep carry. Uh, it does have uh, the screws are not flush mount. So all of you that boohoo that, just, you know, boohoo this. Um, so pretty typical there. Black G10 backspacer there. Uh, you do have a lanyard hull and it runs through the backspacer. So it's basically a tubed lanyard hull. And that is about it as far as materials except... Of course, it is a, a bearing pivot. It does have single row ceramic bearings in phosphor bronze cages on the pivot. And then it has a ceramic detent. Also, 
pretty typical of these knives and I'm going to tell you right now um, this knife is fantastic let's talk about the fit and finish and um, it's pretty much perfect it is pretty much perfect there is only one teeny tiny fit and finish issue on this knife that I have found period just one um, let's look at the blade. It, of course, is a mixture of stone wash on the flats and uh, as ground satin on the um, bevels here, including the wedge. And you know what? It, it's a very clean, it's a very evenly ground, no issues at all there. Sorry about that focus issue. That is from the light reflecting off of that satin blade. Um, no issues in the grind at all, except for one niggly little thing. And that is, I don't know if you can see, when the secondary bevel, the edge bevel was done, the tip on the back side was barely rolled. Now, when I finally resharpen this knife, that will come completely out. It still has a, a good tip that catches instantly. That is just one of those little itty bitty things that a reviewer should pick up on. Other than that, the edge is ground very even, very well on both sides. It came out of the box very slicey. I expect when I go to resharpen this, I grab the KME, strap this thing up like my dungeon slave, and go to work on it with the whips and chains and cat of nine tails then I will be able to fix that edge just fine. So, fit and finish on the blade, no issue there, guys. Uh, even down to the etchings on it, which are not overbearing at all. Uh, well done, but slightly soft jimping. I love the shape of the jimping, but it's just slightly soft on the edges. You do get a dished portion here. Uh, perfectly placed for your thumb. Let's put some pressure on that, and then you can you can see what we got going here on my thumb. Um, I, I wish it was just a, a finite amount crisper, but that is the way it is. It is still functional. Don't get me wrong. Um, let's move on to the handle. Of course, all the small parts are uh, machined satin on stainless, except for the pocket clip, which is much more polished. Um, but the star of the show on the Penguin, as far as I am concerned, is the handle scales. Um, in the past, I have reviewed the Best Tech Swordfish, which uses this bolster look with two different colors of G10, a combination of black for the bolster and color for the scale. And on the Swordfish, um, it's actually two pieces of material. On Swordfish, you've got a pivot screw and then another a small T6 screw holding that part of the scale. And then when you come to the color part of the scale, it's got its mounting hardware. But there is still a join your line here. And um, there's going to be variations in that. Now, it's they did very good on that. I was always very happy with the swordfish. But we're going to take a very close look here. And I hope you're getting enough light there, guys. There is no join your line between the blue and the black. This is a huge fit and finish improvement with this knife. I hope they move forward to this. And when we get into the knife, do the partial disassembly, you are going to see much closer what they did. It is a huge, huge improvement. Now, as far as action goes, I think you can see um, it is a very, very, very smooth. Um, it is everything but drop shut. And I am very happy to say, very happy to say, this Best Tech Penguin has an excellent detent. Listen to this detent when I close it down. Now, you're not hearing the detent. You're hearing the detent sucking the blade against the stop pin. 
Very strong detent. Um, I cannot fail this knife. I have tried uh, to fail this knife, which slowly, slowly, slowly adding pressure. I, I, I can't fail it. That is the slowest flipping action that you will see with this knife. Um, I cannot fail this knife. Yeah, I just can't fail it. Excellent detent. That was the most disappointing thing about the last few Best Tech knives that I reviewed. They had soft detents. I am very happy to say uh, excellent detent on the Penguin. Very happy to say that. Very happy to say that. Um, as far as the feel of it is absolutely smooth. Bearings, of course. Um, centering is, I can't, I can't tell how that looks, guys, but it's straight down the center. Uh, lock up, um, that's my fingers popping, guys. I am really wanking on this thing. It has got zero play. You can see flex in the blade, how hard I'm moving on it. There is zero play in any direction. Um, here is your lock up. Just the right side of super duper solid. And that is your action in a nutshell. Now, let's get out our um, tools here. We're going to throw down... We're going to throw down some towel action here so I don't get anything on my background here. We're going to bring out the combat beads. Jay Wotez driver here. Love this tool. Love this tool. Like I said, we've got T6 small screws here. And we need to keep them in order because I believe we've got some different length screws for um, on this handle scales and the pocket clip. So we're going to pull this pocket clip off. It is mandatory that you pull it off, I believe. And uh, we're going to leave the screws in there so I do not mix them up. Gonna pull this a body screw off here. I'm so excited to show you guys the inside of this knife. This is a bad ass way to build a knife. Bat that gummy come out of there, screw. Alright. T8 for the pivot. Now all the screws had um, a very light treatment of a white, sort of a chalky white thread sealer, you can see here. Um, excellent stuff. I really like this. Um, and there's plenty of it on there. I did not need or feel like I needed to add anything to it when uh, reassembling. So this is what I want to show you right here. Look at the way they did this. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I am no CNC machinist at all. Um, I have worked in manufacturing, I've worked around machining, but I've got to tell you right now, I, I, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do this. I don't even know how they did this. It is flawless, seamless, puzzle piece joiner. I mean, it is flawless and seamless. This may as well be one piece of G10. There is literally... There is no feeling. There is no nail catch. There is no, it is just solid G10 feeling. Um, may as well be just one piece of G10, and that joiner is absolutely beautiful. Um, I, halfway, I wish you could see this on the outside of the knife. I, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. That's a much better look right there. But damn, that is some killer, killer manufacturing on a knife that I just paid $46.80 for. Um, I honestly, you know, there's, there's some other brands that I really like uh, that are in this price range. And there's nobody that has done anything better than that right there. As far as um, doing a bolster look with G10. I, I've not seen it done any better. In fact, um, 
I had a custom knife. It was made by a maker named Kirby Lambert. Uh, Kirby is a pretty hot shot young maker. I call him young. He's younger than me because I'm old. Um, but I had a Kirby Lambert sniper flipper at one time that the scales were blue, black, layered G10, and it had carbon fiber bolsters. And that was a 600 and whatever, blah, 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 dollar knife in 2008. 2008, 2009, and it did not have any better of a joiner than this $52 or $46.80 with the discount um, budget knife. Just It's just beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful, and I'm not going to do a full disassembly here. We've all seen these Best Tech knives. Uh, you can see this liner here, guys. Um, just super cleanly done. Now, of course, the other side has got, uh, you can get out in there some more skeletonization because it does not have the, uh, the lock on that side. But it's got uh, circle holes, spheres, roundy rounds in it for lightning. And um, this, I want to see, I've got this thing. Okay, we've got it taken apart. You can see that the lock bar tension is pushing the blade over. So what we're going to do is we're going to reassemble this thing very quickly. Uh, let's start that uh, pivot in there. Let's see what we got in here. We'll pull that out. I am just going to sort of um, tighten that pivot down just to where it just starts snugging up by finger. Okay, right there. I'm going to run these T6 screws in here. Please forgive if I'm fumbling around here, guys. I don't have my glasses on. I can barely even see these screws up close. Um, if they were on the other side of the house, I could see them a lot better. But All right. All right, all right, all right. Let's see what we got going here on this pocket clip. Did I even get in the hole? I can't even tell, guys. Oh, look at that! Look at that! That is some screw action right there. I think I need to demagnetize my bit there. Okay. Too bad I can't uh, edit video. That would uh, really make me look a little bit better than I am right now, guys. But um, I'm super duper happy with this knife. Um, like I say, I had this superheated uh, love affair with Best Tech knives, and everybody was calling me a Best Tech fanboy, and rightly so, um, I was a Best Tech fanboy. Um, after getting the Swordfish, having two or three of those go through my hands, and um, the Scimitar, and the... the the Paladin, which I also love, um, it, it is just it was just such a killer, killer brand to me. And then all of a sudden, I started getting some uh, weak detents, and I, I just didn't I didn't like that. I, in a flipper, you really need straight back to center, guys. Um, you really need a good detent. Um, if if you don't have a good detent. Even though the design, the geometry of the flipper tab, the pivot, um, even though it, work, it works as a flipper, it's still not enjoyable. And that's what I was missing. And it was, it was heartbreaking because everything else about the knives was so damn good. Best Tech, um, when Best Tech does it right, they do it as well as anybody else. And again, I'm not even talking about their high-end knives, their uh, titanium knives. I'm not talking about that stuff at all. I'm talking about their budget knives. Um, you know, they just, everything is so clean and so good feeling. It's so clean, guys. I mean, I just... Took this thing apart, put it back together, zero issues. Um, I wish 
Best Tech would make the same move that Civivi did, and they would go to T8 screws for their small screws. Uh, Civivi Knives has shown it is easily possible or possibly easy to do that. Um, I just, I, I wish everybody would. I wish everybody would um, because that hardware is out there. It is readily available. Um, it's just a little bit more. I mean, would any of us complain if our $52 knife with perfect fit and finish, the price went up to $55? I mean, that's the sort of price increase you're talking about in a change between uh, stainless button head T6 screws and stainless button head T8 screws. That's that's about all you're, you're looking at there. Um, but it, it, anyway, I'm super, super duper. I'm saying super duper and I'm super happy and, and just all of that crap so much in this review because I am. Uh, this knife is a joy to carry. It's a joy to use. Look at this ergonomic handle shape. Look at this fluting, the details in this. I got sort of stuck in this joiner here, but there's so much going on um, in the shape. The shape really speaks to me in this knife. This fluting here at the tail end and up here at the pivot end, um, it just, it, it's subtle. It is subtle, but it adds so much to it. Um, it's comfortable in the hand. Um, like I say, your thumb falls right in. Your thumb isn't all compressed up. It falls right into that jimp, and uh, you've got this sort of sheep's footy, spear pointy, drop pointy, wicked three-way action going with this blade, you know. Um, it, it just works. It gives you the, the pointy, stabby, pokey, and it gives you continuous belly, and you've got this full, flat grind for a thin edge and a nice rolling, rounded swedge here. And it's just got... The knife has so many interesting things going on that are subtle, so they're not... You know, it's not like glaring. You're looking at it and you're rolling your eyes and you're like, why in the hell did they do that? I mean, there's none of that in this knife. Uh, combine that with the action that is um, excellent to beyond excellent. Um, excellent to beyond excellent fit and finish. And you can quickly see why Baz on Blades is once again excited to be reviewing a best tech product here on his channel and there you go guys the best tech penguin get one get one uh, they're available in multiple colors uh, they'll have a black bolster you can get the blue uh, there's orange there's od green i have seen new versions that have DLC coated blades. Um, there's a really good looking version that I saw. I can't remember where. Uh, Jeffrey Orthopedic sent me a picture of it. But it's uh, blacked out with the OD on the handle, OD green on the handle. Oh, yeah. Very tough looking. So there you go. The Best Tech Penguin. Highly, highly recommended by Baz on Blades. Um,. And I'm I'm just very excited to see Best Tech, a brand that I really did uh, have a very positive vibe with, um, reaffirming my feelings towards them. I'm just super happy with that. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.